was dead, the Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon him. heaven looked away the son of god was laid in darkness the battle in the grave the war on death was waged the power of hell forever broke I saw Jesus crucified. I spoke to him as he died. I saw him in his struggle. I watched as he breathed his last breath and when he stopped breathing, I lost my breath too. The one who walked on water is no more. The one who fed 5,000 is now food for the worms and if he has been defeated, what does that mean for me? I thought that he would be the king who would rise up and rule our nation. I thought that we were the ones to bring truth and revelation, but it turns out we were wrong. I mean, maybe we imagined this all along. As I watched his body taken down from the cross, I saw my friend was gone, and he was the one who found me. How could this be? 
must have gone before his time It must have been too soon It must have been an illusion or a dream He can't be in a tomb I can't come to grips with the thought That the man who claimed to be I am Was slain by the hands of men And then She burst through the door Our friend Mary, she said Someone had taken the body of the Lord So we ran to the tomb Only to find an empty room And the stone was rolled away I looked on the floor And I saw his clothes And that's when I knew He rose Jesus is alive He did walk on water He did feed the 5,000 He did raise Lazarus from the dead and heal thousands. He did make the wine. He did talk to God. He did pray for those who put him on the cross and he raised back to life. Just like Lazarus, except for he would never die again. Jesus took death. Nails in his hands. Nails in his feet. A crown of thorns on his head. For you. He laid his life down and he took it back again. Jesus is alive. Good morning. Jesus is alive. Amen. It's lovely to welcome you this morning, whether you are a regular here at Southcourt Baptist Church, whether you're here supporting friends, family this morning who are being baptized, for those watching online as well, good morning. It's lovely to have you with us. So this morning is a baptism service. As you can kind of tell, it's a little bit different. There's a big jacuzzi in the middle of the room here. And uh, I love a baptism service. I love baptism Sundays. They're a day of celebration, of new life, uh, and just celebrating that people have made a commitment to follow Jesus. And what better day to do that than on Easter Sunday? It's going to be a lovely morning. Just a little bit of a... A few things for you, especially if this is a new building for you, if this is a new thing for you, if you're not a regular here. Um, What we're going to do this morning is we're going to worship God together through song. Uh, And as we do that, feel free to stand or sit, be relaxed. We We want to worship God with all of our bodies in whatever way is comfortable for you. If standing is hard, then please don't feel you have to stand. If you don't know the songs, maybe you just want to hear them spoken over you or, or sing along. You'll probably be able to pick the words up pretty well. Um, then we're going to hear from those who are being baptized. They're going to share a bit of their story, how they've come to faith. Uh, David's going to be bringing a message to us from the Bible this morning. And then we're going to end our service with the, the main event, the baptisms themselves. So we're really looking forward to all of that. A couple other bits and pieces as well. We've got um, Life Kids, so like a, a, a children's group is on this morning. So if you've got young children here this morning, that's going to be in our Jubilee Hall. If you don't know where that is, it's towards the back of the room, turn right, go down the corridor, and you'll see basically a room full of toys. So that's where you know the kids' stuff is on. So all good. Uh, and there's also, I believe, hopefully the, the service is being um, live streamed into our small creche room as well. So if you've got small babies here and they want a little bit more space or whatever, there's, I think the service should be being streamed through on a TV as well. So you shouldn't even miss anything that's going on. That's brilliant. I'm just going to check my notes, make sure I haven't forgotten anything that's happening no, I don't think so. So Life Kids, um, about Life Kids, they're going to go out after we've worshipped together at the start of the morning. So I can explain that a little bit later when we come to that. This morning, worship band, would you like to stand? Would you all like to stand with us if you're able as we start? We're going to worship God through song together this morning. But I just want to read before we do that as we set our hearts on why we're here this morning. That video has teed things up for us brilliantly. But I just want to read an account from Luke's Gospel about that very first Easter Sunday morning. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the woman took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. 
But they said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Amen. He is risen. And I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean I stand amazed stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me a sinner condemned unclean singing
greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me, singing out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day, shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive.
blood of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for Easter. Thank you for the message, the truth that you are alive today. Holy Spirit, come now and just fill each of us afresh this morning. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please do feel free to grab a seat. So we've reached that part of the morning where, for, for us, this is a, an amazing opportunity to hear people's stories and what's brought them to this day to be baptized. And for those telling the story, the slightly nervous part of the morning. So can we give them a, a big round of applause? We're going to invite firstly Lou, Villagram, and Abigail to come and join us on stage. Lou, do you want to take the microphone as you'll be going first? You can either all sit on the sofa or there's a seat there as well. Sofa's more comfortable. I get it. It's fine. I'll sit on the, uh, the stool. It's fine. Okay. So th this is the part of the morning where we get to chat to you guys a little bit about your faith journey, what's brought you to, to this day, why you want to come and be baptized and stand in a nice and warm, by the way, very nice warm um, pool of water um, doing this, this thing today. So, Lou, I'm going to start with you, and what we'll do is we'll kind of we'll go through each person in turn so that we can really hear your story and, and share in that. So, Lou, just in a few words, tell us, how did, how did you come to faith? Um, so, I remember it was 2012. I walked through the doors here and actively began my faith journey. I was searching for strength and healing, and I was welcomed with open arms, both from the people here today and God. Since then, I've found strength, compassion, love, and forgiveness. God and Jesus have been stood next to me throughout my life. I've learned I just need to hold up my hand for them to take. And uh, how, because everyone's journey is so very different, and, and the, the journey to baptism especially is a significant moment in the life of, of each of us in our, in our faith journey. So for you, Lou, how did you know, how did you come to that point and know that I want to be baptised? Um, so I've been thinking about it for years. My journey in faith isn't about reaching a destination, but it's about the road trip itself and the stops along the way. This is one of those stops. I, don't, I didn't have a eureka moment, but I have a growing heart, and it's been leading me to this moment. Amazing. I love that. I love what you said there about it's about the road trip. So often we can get focused on the end result of our journey, but we lose sight of... The fact that we're all on a journey and there's so many different stops along the way. And today, this is a, a big one for you to be baptized. So what does it, what does it mean for you today, this, this coming, being baptized today? What does it mean for you? Um, I've reached the point where I want to make the public declaration. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. I believe in Jesus. I have faith in Jesus and I trust Jesus. This is where I'm meant to be. That's amazing. Can we give Lou a big round of applause? <laughs> hand, the, hand the mic around. So, uh, Villagram, yes. same questions, really. Uh, they're no different. Right. Um, but in a few words, tell us, how did you come to faith, Villagram? My journey to faith has been more like a slow and progressive one with no major step from my birth, watching my grandmom, my mom, take me to church and back teach me about Christ and schooling and learning about Christ and coming to believe in Christ. In fact, I've seen several moments in my life where I know if it were not Jesus Christ, I don't know how I, could, I would have made it up to this moment. And that gave me that belief that Christ is real, like he's our only hope. If you don't believe in him, you've got nothing else you should believe in. So that belief 
and the journey of seeing everything around me, several things around me, no one measure, some small, some measure, has made me to believe in Christ. Amazing. Yeah. Lovely. And so uh, for you, how did you know that now is the moment for me, this is the time when I want to be baptized? Um, knowing and believing in Christ and knowing and understanding that he himself was baptized and he commanded us that if you believe in Christ, in him, you sh should get baptized and being ready to die in myself so I can live for him and not for myself instead, that's what made me to, make, to come to the point where I've decided I want to get baptized. Lovely. And, and so what does it mean for you today, having come to that, that moment, that knowing, what does it mean for you today to be baptized? For me today, uh, being baptized is, it means dying in myself to live for Christ. It's like a new me is being born. Like my sins are washed away and now I live for him, sinless. I'm ready to follow him all the rest of my life. Amazing. Can we give Villagram also a round of applause? Do you want to hand the microphone over to Abigail? You're going to have very sore hands by the end of this morning, aren't you? All, all of this. I'm sorry for this. But uh, Abigail, same questions. Tell us a little bit, how did, how did you come to faith? Um, well, my own personal encounter with Christ was actually during COVID. Um, and I know it sounds pretty silly to say that I was able to find God during such a difficult time. Um, but yeah, that is how I personally found Christ. Um, I was born into a typical like Christian household and they cherished and loved me ever since I was young and Christ has always been a firm foundation for me. Um, but it was like during the middle of year six during the lockdown period. Um, and it was a difficult time for me because I found out I hadn't made it into my dream secondary school which was like the main priority back then. So it was a time where I could seek God's faith and I was able to find the essence of the faith I'd been brought into at a very young age. Lovely, something good to have come out of lockdown. Yes. Amen. Um, when did you know that you wanted to be baptized? Um, to be honest, I didn't start consider baptism until um, around last year. Um, so last Easter was actually my birthday and I wanted to get baptized then because I thought, oh, perfect timing, you know, now's the time. I feel like my relationship, I'm there where I want to be. Um, but I was too shy to approach anyone and discuss like advancing in my faith. So it never really happened. Um, but yeah, baptism has been something I've been considering for about a year now. Cool. And what does it mean for you today to come and be baptized? Um, for me, being baptized today is really significant because I feel like it highlights like how far I've come in my journey from being that young girl back in lockdown who didn't really know what the meaning of life was, had no sense of direction. Um, it's been something I've been really anticipating and looking forward to since the moment I spoke about it. And I just feel like I'm finally able to show my community and my loved ones like how much Christ means to me and declare the wonders of God's power. Amazing. Thank you so much. Let's give all three of them a round of applause. You guys can go and sit back down. You've done it. Well done. It's such a privilege to, to be able to hear people's journeys and their stories and to celebrate that together during, during a baptism service. It's never easy coming up the front. It's always a bit daunting having to, to do that. Speaking up the front is definitely not for everyone. So well done to you. We're going to break things with a little bit. So we're going to have another worship song this morning. And then we're going to hear from the next three people after that. But we're going to worship God again for those stories that we've just heard.
Amen. Amen. Please do feel free to grab a seat again. So now we're going to hear from the last three people who are being baptized this morning. So Angel, Ben, and Ethan, up you come. Let's give them a round of applause. seat guys angel there's the microphone for you you're going first so it's exactly the same you've seen the other guys do it so now it's your turn um so angel tell us in a few words how did you come to faith well i grew up in a christian household and um i've had the faith like around me for like as long as i can remember Um, I was a baby born into the faith, and naturally, um, I wanted to follow my parents' example and be a Christian too. So I felt that because I didn't really know what it meant, to be honest. I was just doing like what everyone else was doing around me. I decided that I was just going to like follow my parents' example, but that didn't really make me feel in the faith, to be honest. However, when I grew up, I put my faith in things around me that I really shouldn't have. I I got into like a group with friends. They were bad people. They they really like didn't want what was best for me. And they left me feeling heartbroken and rejected and I felt like everything was over to be honest. But I felt like God with, with the support of my parents and prayer, I feel like God picked me up and he made me whole again. Um, I also had this one big experience with God. I think this one was my waking moment, to be honest. Um, my mom was pregnant with my baby sister and she was in the hospital for a while because after she had given birth, my sister, um, needed to like there was a lot of complications with her um, and she was born prematurely I'm really scared like being up here to be honest take your time take your time <laughs> yeah so she <clears throat> she was in the hospital for a very long time and we were desperately praying that God would make her better we were praying that God would help her to come home and she did. She came home. God came through. And we were looking at names. And I suggested, let's name her Faith, because we had faith in that moment. We had faith that God would see us through. Wow. Yeah. Well, me, you, you've still got a few more questions me. to answer, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Andrew, how did... Wow. Uh, how did you know um, that this was the time that you wanted to get baptized today? Well, I've always looked at baptism in like a very childish way. I always thought it was like really fun because it's like a pool and you're like going in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so I never really understood the significance of being baptized. Um, it's, it was up until recently. Um, I went on a trip with like the church. I did a church trip. And I saw people give their life to Jesus. And it kind of like clicked in my head that these people were making a conscious decision to follow Jesus for the rest of their lives. And I thought that's something I want to be a part of. That's something that I want to do. I want to give my life to Jesus and live for him and him only. So I thought, baptism, this is the step that I'm going to take to be able to go give my life to Jesus. And, <laughs> and uh, so, so what, what, does, what does it mean for you coming to this, this moment that's maybe been, been a process for you? Um, what does it mean for you today to be baptized? It means the world to me. Knowing that today I'm about to make one of the best decisions in my life is really... <laughs> it's, it's, you can't even, I can't even like comprehend it. It's just so amazing and I feel truly truly blessed to be here today amazing let's give Angel a round of applause shall we (laughs) 
That was great. Thank you, Angel. And uh, so Ben and Ethan, you are actually brothers. So um, we spoke a little bit about this, but parts of your story uh, are the same. So we're going to like maybe do a bit of crossing over together uh, as your stories kind of link together. But we'll start with you, Ben, and Ethan, chip in if, if there's bits that you want to add. But, but Ben, how did you come to faith? Um, it's quite simple, really. Uh, being born and raised in a Christian family like from birth, I always just followed my parents to church, you know, when they said come Sunday, like every Sunday we go to church and I just follow them, not knowing why I was going, like why I was going to church, why I would follow them there. But after a while, like going to church, I began to question why we went to church every Sunday, why I had to come every Sunday. So I asked myself, what am I doing here? So that's when I started praying and reading the Bible. And after investigation and asking all these questions, I realized that this is who I want to be, and I want to follow God, and I want to follow this path. That's amazing. And uh, how, how, how did you know that this was the moment that you wanted to be baptized? Um, after I decided that I wanted to go to church, go and like, be a Christian, I've always knew that I wanted to be baptized. It was just like a matter of when, and it's now that I realize that I've decided that I really want to do it now. I've decided that this is the moment that I want to give my life to Christ and be born again. Uh, and then what does, it, what does it mean for you today to, to do that? Uh, it means a lot. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to give my life to Christ and to be born anew, like washing away of my sins. Like I used to be a very sinful person, lying, stealing. So, uh, yeah. Now it's now that I've decided that I really, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, and that I want to wash my sins away now and be cleansed. Great. Let's give Ben a big round of applause. <laughs> Ethan, your your turn. So, how how did you come to faith? Well, it's really like Ben. I was born in a Christian family. And I followed my mum and dad to church without really knowing why or questioning why I follow them to this place. But as I grew older and I was going to church, I started analysing and, quest and questioning why. And look at all the good things God has done in these people's lives. And how can, he, how can this happen to me? How can this affect my life? So then that, when I grew, like, I think it was to age of 10, that's when I decided I really wanted to be a Christian. And uh, when was the moment for you that you knew you wanted to be baptized? When I was growing up, it was like Sunday school and stuff that I was learning about God and how John the Baptist baptized Jesus. And I realized that, oh, this is such a wonderful thing, the way that you've been chosen by God so that you can go and have your sins and washed away from you. And uh, what, what does it mean for you today coming and, and being baptized here? Well, it's really a dedication of your life to God in God's hands and really just the washing away of an old person, a person of sin and the birth of a new person, someone who's worthy of the Lord, someone who can do the Lord's work. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a round of applause. Well done. You can go and sit down again now. So, so good to, to share it, even just briefly, hearing from, from people's lives, the things that's brought them to this moment of celebration today. We're going to worship again by song, uh, and then David is going to come and, and speak to us after that, uh, and then... It will be the baptism moment after that. Let's worship God in song again.
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name.
Thank you so much, God, for today. Thank you for this room full. Thank you for the faith, the hope, the life and future that we're celebrating here. I pray, Lord, as we carry on through the final parts of our time together, that you would open all of our hearts to all that you want to generously, powerfully, miraculously give to each one of us. So here we are, Lord. Speak, we pray. Amen. Grab a seat. So, yeah, it's fantastic to uh, see you here this morning. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's David Graham. I'm the lead pastor here. I work with, Gr with Graham. Yeah, I work with Graham. I work with James as well and various other people as we lead church here on the South, in the South Court neighborhood. <clears throat> and for many people in the world, uh, no, I didn't get it wrong. So, okay, it's not the wrong uh, uh, slide thing here. For many people in the world, the big cultural day of the year, the biggest all of celebration days is Christmas Day. And that would be maybe universally the case, uh, certainly for people in this part of the world. But what we're here to say this morning is Christmas Day is really good, and it is, who doesn't like Christmas Day, but for us Christian types, Easter Day is way, way better. And uh, my thing uh, in these next few moments is to say, well, why? <laughs> why would that be? Because I think it amps up one of our main things, which is this, life after death. Um, our songs and our smiles as we look around the place it's not just that we're hoping against hope that more sunshine is about to arrive. Uh, we were hoping for better this morning, to be honest. But the, the songs and the smiles are really um, flowing out of a belief that our fate is a gate, that our end is a beginning, and that our history is his story. Easter Day is our day to shout and sing, sometimes friends through tears. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your victory? We believe in a God who, as God the Son, stepped down into this weary world of us. And he lived our life. He died our death. And then inexplicably, through an act of recreative, life-giving power, was the first of us, the first of many, to be raised from the grave. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is... Absolutely. But then not only was the resurrection life of Jesus the greatest comeback of all time, but it also spectacularly decided our destiny. Our fate is now because of Jesus a gate. Our end because of Jesus is now a beginning. And his story is now our story. We will see a day when we will have our own resurrection day. We will see a resurrection life that will be an end to all of our dying, our crying, our hurting, and mourning, because all of those old things have passed away for good, forever. Because there is a God who will make it so. So, uh, for Christians, for Christian types, Christmas is good, but Easter is way, way better because it celebrates and amplifies one of our main things, which is life after death. 
And actually, to be honest, this alone should be enough for you to get you to throw a few daffodils in the air and kiss a total stranger. <laughs> Feel free. But actually, there's another thing here. Another one of our main things. It sets loose our big belief in life before death. And actually in our stories, that's coming through loud and clear. Um, Easter doesn't just change our then and there life. It changes our here and now life. We believe in better for right now. We believe we can be empowered to be changed and be the change we want to see. The book says this, the same, listen to this, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is at work in you and me. The same creator given resurrection power is in you this morning as you sit there. But I guess the important question for us today is, so what for? What's it for? Well, for us here in our South Court home, amongst other things, we want to see and be the life of Jesus that flows out from me and you out to others as well. It's about seeing and being a neighborhood where, and I'm going to quote it again, the hungry are fed, the streets are safer, the next generation is thriving, the community is more united, oppressions are being lifted, minds, bodies, and souls are being mended, relationships are flourishing, more laughter is heard, and the love, favor, and presence of God is actually Felt. And as we hurtle towards the main event, the big conclusion, not only is what we've just heard or what I've just said to you the, um, the, the main point of Easter, it's also the main point of baptism. That's why we're doing this truly crazy thing, because let's make no mistake, taking a bath in public is not something that normal people do. And so there are six very nervous people sitting there going, why am I doing this? Why? I think I know why I'm doing this, but I, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this. But anyway, it's, it's what I've just said to you explains fully what this is all about. And so actually, um, you can't see the water yet, and we'll take the covers off. And by the way, someone isn't going to burst through uh, like a, an Easter bunny or a chicken or something. Sorry to disappoint. But um, uh, yes, of course, as uh, our friends go into this water, uh, there is the symbol as they are laying down in, and the water just about breaks their face. There, there is that symbol of dying. Uh, and then hopefully, uh, they'll come back up again and uh, they'll be the symbol of new life. But, but then what we won't have, uh, despite some maybe expectation that there's a little button at the back here and the jacuzzi starts bubbling and there's six of them plus another couple of people uh, in there and they're enjoying the flow of the water and uh, they're just standing there and then uh, we uh, issue some cocktails with lum little umbrellas and then uh, there's a tro Club Tropicana playing constantly on loop until Jesus comes again. Uh, that's not what's going to happen here. Because although there is the symbol of death and coming to life, they will get out of the pool. And they'll step down a little step here because some of you are wondering, how are they going to get in and out? There's steps around the back here. Oh. Uh, so they'll step down these steps and they'll walk out of this pool and they'll walk out of this building once they've dried off and they will begin to live the life that Jesus has called them to live. They will step out of the pool, washed, empowered, and ready to be ambassadors, ambassadors of the kingdom come culture of help, hope, and healing to the world that so desperately needs to hear it. So what this is all about is that we're going to live out in the here and now what the then and there is going to be in total. And so, bringing this to a conclusion, on this Easter morning, as you watch, I've written down here, and you applaud, yet again, the splashy commissioning of six ready-to-go Jesus believers, 
you need to ask yourself two questions. Number one, what on earth am I here on planet earth for? What on earth am I here on planet earth for? What's the purpose of it? I know there's uh, clearly some what feels like a bit bonkers stuff going on around you this morning. I hope that you will catch a glimpse of a hope that leads to a purposeful life. Many of the stories that we've just heard is um, that, yes, there's been a backstory, but there's a hope that it goes on from here, that there is a purpose to life beyond this thing. So what about you? The first question, what am I here on planet Earth for? Second question, what am I hoping for? What am I hoping for? Or actually expanding it in a more important direction. Or rather, who am I hoping in? Am I going to survive this week, this month, this year, this life? Or am I going to find the purpose for which I was created? And am I going to be empowered to live that purpose through the power of Jesus the risen Jesus himself. Jesus, we believe, absolutely nailed it when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. And maybe this Easter, his story could become your story. Okay, let's baptize some people. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Love that. All right. If I can invite the six who are going to be baptized to, to come on up. Boys, you need to go. Yeah, take your, take your things off. Put your shorts on. Up you come. Check your pockets. Make sure you, you know, phone's not in your pocket. Take off, you know, anything that you don't want to go in the pool with. Josh, would you come up as well? We're going to take the lids off. If you've got children, by the way, in Life Kids, now's the moment to go and grab them so they can come and watch and hang around the splash zone. So go and grab kids. We're going to get settled, talk about yourselves for a couple of minutes, and then we'll get cracking with the main event. Are holding towels for those being baptized. If you come up as well, that would be great. About time I took the microphone off, I think. stand Lou 
Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Saviour and Lord? Yes. On the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? Yes. In light of your expression of faith, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Celebration moment. And I pray your blessing upon her today and in the day and the weeks to come. And she may your presence so instantly. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> All right, do you want to go out and get yourself dry? <laughs> believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? Yes, I do. On the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? Yes, I do. In light of your expression of faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for the Thank you for him, thank you for this day, for his decision to follow you. And Lord Jesus, I pray in the days and the weeks to come, he will be your presence. Abigail, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Saviour and Lord? Yes, I do. On the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? Yes, I do. In the light of your expression of faith, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Saviour and Lord? Yes, I do. On this, the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? Yes, I do. In the light of your expression of faith, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ben, 
Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? I do. On the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? I do. In light of your expression of faith, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come and take stands. Right. Right. Ethan, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Saviour? I do. On the occasion of your baptism, do you dedicate your life again to his service? I do. In the light of your expression of faith, we now baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Well done. More worship song. Thanks, John. death 
And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of all Shall not kneel, shall not
praise, I sing for all that you've done for me. Uh, stay and uh, have a cup of tea, coffee, cold drink. Uh, I think there's hot cross buns and all that sort of stuff. Enjoy being here. Let me send us out now with an Easter blessing on us all. May this Easter day bring resurrection life to your heart and to your home. May renewal radiate from within you and revival emanate through you. May dawn displace the darkness and spring replace the winter in your life. May the God of hope so fill you with joy and peace this Easter that you may overflow with hope by the power of his life forever and ever. Amen. God bless you.